Welcome to my Adobe Please Make Five Tweaks That Will Make Photoshop the King of Animation Software open video letter. I'm an amateur animator and professional illustrator and had been hitting my head against the wall trying to find an affordable and viable traditional tradigital animation pipeline. With 3D oversaturating the market, there is a resurgence and renewed interest in old school hand-drawn pose-to-pose -pose animation. The community is strong and it's being supported by experienced animators who are being let go from big studios like Disney and DreamWorks and who don't want to see the beautiful art of hand-drawn animation become a dying art. Unfortunately, even in today's state-of-the-art software universe, most professionals still prefer to draw on paper. Why? Because it offers a flexible workflow and still nothing compares to the unparalleled line weight and opacity control of a simple pencil. The bottom line is that even if a software offers all the technical functionality that eases the pain of inking and shooting and compositing in the traditional methods, if an animator can't generate the foundation drawings in a controlled and deliberate way, then the software will be abandoned and all the benefits that come with digital workflows potentially are wasted. I find this to be true of just about all the animation software on the market today, which I'll be reviewing briefly in a few moments. Photoshop, on the other hand, has a legacy of strong and stable drawing and painting workflows. It's currently featuring complex 3D building and painting functionality. It only has very little to improve upon to also rein in the 2D animation pipeline. Why is this an important demographic? Well, first, because 2D animation is a powerful and engaging way to tell a story. And second, because the success of even 3D animation is strongly tied to the fundamental principles of 2D animation. The best 3D animators in the industry still use initial 2D pencil tests to rough out and ultimately keep their character animations honest. So Adobe, don't miss this opportunity. First, a quick review of what's currently on the market. And as a disclaimer, I'm very well versed in Photoshop, but I'm not a power user of any of these softwares which I'm about to review. However, I do have a strong digital drawing background, and if a digital drawing experience is frustrating for me, I can't imagine what it's like for traditional animators who have to jump into some of the following digital workflows. All right, let's start. Okay, the first one is Toon Boom Animate Pro. And I have to start out by saying I have not used Harmony and I understand that it's made some significant Im improvements in, in terms of drawing experience and brush engines and things like that. But um, it seems to be pretty expensive and you can't even purchase it directly I, as far as I understand. You need to get some kind of contact from them and even that makes it prohibitive for me at least as an individual animator or even a small studio. Uh, Toon Boom Animate Pro is a full-featured uh, animation software. It has great integration, uh, integration with Storyboard Pro, which is a fantastic piece of software for storyboarding. And if you're completely immersed in that pipeline, I can completely see how uh, Animate Pro is, is an attractive solution. That being said, uh, for traditional frame-to-frame -frame animation, for me at least, it's a poor drawing experience. No real bitmap brush engine, and, and it's expensive. So the bottom line is, it is the tool of choice if you're using vector style flash puppet animation, but I find it frustrating for a tradigital workflow. Just a couple examples here. I'll grab the brush tool and I'll just use the the standard brush. Um, and it, it really does have a, a great vector brush engine and experience, uh, very much like drawing an illustrator or or flash for that matter. Uh, again, for setting up puppet style animation, really nice IK, fe IK uh, skeleton features, 3D camera support, much like you'd see in an After Effects, etc. But for just traditional sketching, I find that the vector workflow doesn't give me the one thing I need to really build up a drawing, which is control over a light uh, opacity line. So if I'm building up a foundation sketch for, you know, for a face, I'm, I'm quickly going into this inky black look. Now granted, of course, I can use a gray, you know, vector brush, but it just, it's not the same. 
uh, not being able to to build up a line and, and and just feel the volumes like you like you do on paper or you know just in a nice uh, classic Photoshop brush uh, scenario. They do have the closest thing to a sketching pencil that I found at least. Again, I apologize. I'm not a power user of, of, of these softwares, so maybe I'm missing something. But by attaching some texture to the regular vector brush, it seems like they're able to simulate what might look to be a bitmap, bitmap brush. I do have some control over for opacity, it seems like. Um, if I press down hard on the stylus, I do get a thicker, darker line versus the light approach. So in a sense, it does feel a little closer to to what I might expect from a you know from just kind of a nice bitmap brush in Photoshop, but apparently it's turning each stroke into some kind of textured vector file. Uh, you're actually able to come in here and and select this, and it looks like open up the mask for this thing, which kind of freaks me out a little bit. Why? Because it's simulating something. And when I try to erase, I can't quite get that natural erase feel that I that I, I'd expect from, you know, from a regular bitmap brush line. Granted, I know that the vector lines mean it's scalable and it's resolution independent. But if I know I'm animating, you know, at an HD size, I'll just draw it in HD size, and I don't feel like I'm gaining much by by working in vector. Okay, I'm trying to do a really light erasure there and it just completely blocks that out because it is it's vector and and that's what you're drawing in so not a completely satisfying satisfying experience for me in in what i'm looking for and be able to, to just kind of knock out a sketch the brush engine is fast though and it is accurate i don't feel like i i can't be accurate with this but i can't adjust this like i would in a, in a traditional vector based program so that's a weakness i think um, another uh, another nice feature of Toon Boom is let me just kind of drop a couple of frames here. Their onion skin feature is fairly usable. When I was animating a scene in this, I did find myself trying to grab this tiny little handle and, and missing it or changing my my timeline when I really wanted to extend the onion skin. So it's novel, but I don't know that it's incredibly intuitive uh, for the amount of times that I like to change my onion skin settings at least. Maybe if your approach is different, it's perfect. But the functionality is there. It's got a nice X sheet. You can come through here and you know extend these and give yourself some hold frames fairly easily. See there, I try to scrub the timeline and I opened up the, uh, the onion skin settings. So again, sometimes these tools are, are uh, there's a lot of technical ability there, but the implementation starts getting in the way of, of the creative process for me. So strengths are full featured, great integration with Storyboard Pro, weaknesses, poor drawing experience, no real bitmap brush engine, expensive. And for me, it's the tool of choice if you're already using vector style flash puppet animation for sure, but a little frustrating for a traditional workflow. Okay, next is TV Paint. Another very powerful piece of software. I believe it's from a Canadian company. I know that some of the more seasoned traditional animators will say that TV, TV Paint is the closest that they've come to to a real traditional drawing experience, and I believe it. I don't have the full version here. I just have the demo. It's also uh, kind of expensive. I, I believe it's $1,200 or $1,500 or something like that. Again, in that same range that makes it a little bit prohibitive for, for independent studios or animators for that matter. And then for everyone in their, you know, in their animation group to get a copy. Either way, if something works, it's worth the expense, if it works well. Immediately, I think you'll notice that the interface is a little overwhelming. And I started poking around just trying to figure it out w without reading the manual and quickly got lost and couldn't figure out how to delete things, which I find is, is an immediate, um, um, what's the word? I'm immediately put off by using something like this because I feel like it should just be clear and obvious what fu the functionality of the software is. 
either way, the drawing experience is is fairly nice actually. This is a real bitmap uh, brush experience as far as I know. I mean, I can't select anything like I like I was in Toon Boom, uh, at least. And and the brushes are not bad. Um, let me just zoom in here. I'm used to using my my Photoshop brushes, my Photoshop um, shortcuts here. This is what I didn't like though. I as soon as you zoom in, what seemed to be a good clean line um, just didn't ha doesn't have that quality to me that I'm looking for. Maybe because I'm just spoiled by Clip Studio and Photoshop brushes. Um, of course, I know, I realize I'm, I'm zooming in here. But there's something about this line that seems a little weak to me. Again, could be the brush I'm using, but even so... It is a good drawing experience. Um, I can come in here. Um, let's see. You know, do kind of like a nice little foundation sketch. I feel like I'm, you know, I'm really. Yeah, I feel like I can really come in here and just sketch like I'd expect, you know, on, on a piece of paper. Okay, I'm getting carried away now. So let me see, select all, delete, that works. Again, I'm, I'm kind of just going back to some instinctive commands that I'm used to in Photoshop, and when they're there, it makes me happy. When they're not, I get frustrated. Uh, just because I'm, I'm in and out of Photoshop and Clip Studio all day long, that if I'm drawing, I just I need the animation software to behave in a similar way. The timeline... Functionality is, is pretty powerful, though. Um, you know, I, I can draw something here, move on. If I change this to none, it'll, it'll automatically create a new drawing for me, like I'd expect. I think what I love most about TV Paint is its onion skin feature, which they call a light table. So I'm going to turn that on here. Let's see. I'm trying to remember how to turn it on now. I apologize to... All those of you who know how to use this software really well. Uh, let's see, frame, gradient. Now I forgot. I just did it. On, on, off. Um, see, that I believe turns these onion skins on and off. Image, instance, frame. Okay, I, I promise I'm not doing this on purpose to make this software look complicated. I really was just onion skidding not too long ago. Well, case in point, though, I just knew how to do it, and now I don't. That's not good. If I did get it working, uh, the onion skidding is really nice, actually. I really do want to get this working. Maybe this is an old file. Okay, in this file, it, it seems to be working. Again, I apologize to those of you who know that I'm just stupid about this software. Um, in this case, uh, these little kind of gradient bars are, are awesome. I mean, you can kind of go in on a per frame basis and they automatically adjust front and back. I can turn it off completely, you know, fairly quickly, etc. And it's kind of fun to do. They have this really nice feature where you can choose how the back and forward onion skin shapes should look. So I can say that everything in the back is red to blue or A pen to B pen. And this, uh, you know, has obvious advantages. Oftentimes, if you're working on a complex scene, um, here, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to change this now. Go, okay, that one did it. And this one's supposed to do it. Gradient, okay. Here we go, red to blue. Blue, red, yellow. In any case, you can change these to to whatever you want, and then you can clearly see what's ahead and what's behind, which is a really nice feature when, when you have a complex character shape and there's just hands everywhere and, you know, capes flowing. Um, very helpful. So I thought that was the most intuitive onion skinning approach that I've seen in, in just about any of the software packages. Again, it is very powerful. This whole layer has about 100,000 things I, I know it can do, and I don't know how to do it right now like pinning things to a pegboard and, and moving things, you know, on, on two different pegboards and things like that. Uh, their little dots here indicate 
how to extend a hold frame. So if you grab it from the beginning of itself, sorry, if you grab it from the top left of a frame, it'll slide that edit. But if you grab it from the bottom, it'll push that edit. So that's that's powerful. And I really like that a lot. Um, again, with TV Paint, I think it's just an, itch, an issue of getting used to this software, getting used to a slightly different interface. I wish it had more functionality, more obvious functionality uh, that meshed with some of the other softwares that I use on a daily basis. That would make it a much more productive tool for me. Of course, if I was in and out of this software every day, I'm sure I'd be flying through it. So yeah, great piece of software. I think it's a little overcomplicated in terms of interface and not super intuitive, but it is, I think, the closest thing that's out there. Uh, that allows you to, you know, to really kind of immerse yourself in the animation process. But it's expensive. It's hard for, you know, a small team to purchase. And ultimately, anyone in the animation pipeline has to now learn this this unknown universe of TV paint if they're going to be productive. So strengths, full featured, lots of customization, great onion skinning, decent drawing experience and transformation tools. Weaknesses, confusing and outdated UI for me, somewhat steep learning curve. It's expensive. The verdict, if you have the money for key animators to use TV Paint, they'll appreciate the attempt to cater to traditional animation techniques, but we'll still prefer the control that traditional paper offers. Okay, next up is Digicel Flipbook. And this is an interesting one because it's been around for a number of years, and the website has a number of wonderful testimonials from longtime animators and uh, you know, from all around the world in different studios. And it is. It's a really good piece of a lightweight animation software. So let's just open it up real quick. Um, some basic windows. I wish it had a little more of a kind of an environment that feel, felt a little more, you know, weighty m maybe. But that's nothing to complain about, really. Um, big cartoony icons, which, ah, okay, it's a cartoon animation program. Decent drawing experience. Um, it is a, a pixel-based um, brush system, and um, yeah, I feel like I can I can draw fairly well. I'm sorry, I keep kind of drawing the same the same guy here, just for the sake of comparison. Yeah, I feel like I can sketch fairly decently, um, although I keep getting the sense that it's not taking advantage of of the full range of my of my Wacom. In the preferences, it says I'm using tablet mode in 255 levels levels of pressure. But yeah, I just I feel like in Photoshop and, and Clip Studio and, and even some other packages, um, it's it's taking more advantage of, of the sensitivity of, of the Wacom tablet. Uh, standard navigation like spacebar does move your your canvas around, plus and minus. Yeah, I just I feel like it's a little for as long as it's been around. It feels a little amateur in terms of where drawing programs are these days and and in a way that makes me wonder why why hasn't more development been done on this, especially for a program that's meant to draw a thousand drawings on, is my biggest question. The lasso tool is super limited. As far as I know, I couldn't figure out another way to use a lasso except for the square. So I'll draw a square here, and I can't seem to move it around. Um, let me just quickly go through the options here real quick. Edit. Yeah, again, I may be missing something. I'm not a power user of this, but it seemed to me that the only thing you could do was cut and paste. A and again, a buggy Mac implementation. It's it's really not pasting or the the preview correctly. But of course, when I click off, it, it is pasting somewhere. Um, I'll paste again. Same thing. Okay, so it quit unexpectedly. This may be. I've had a few issues with the Mac build of Flipbook. On the on the good side, uh, great customer service. I've emailed the developers and they got back to me within the day, so I, f I feel like they're passionate about their work. They just it, there's a there's a Windows build and a Mac build, and the Mac build seems to be the newer one, uh, as is as is often the case. So, yeah, I'm I was a little underwhelmed for all of the positive feedback that there was on the site. Maybe I was expecting a little more. They do have a it seems to be a sketching mode, and then a color mode uh, for inking, in, etc. So I'm not quite sure how that works. They have a really nice X sheet. I'll double click here to make new shapes. 
you know, decent light box functionality. One of the things I love about Flipbook that uh, I think TV Paint has a button for it, and maybe there's a hotkey, but um, I don't know what it is. If I hit enter, it, it plays for me. And then, let's see, how do I bring this up again? It has, <clears throat> yeah, I paused the recording for a little bit because I thought I had, had made a mistake, but sure enough, I think it's frozen on me. It, it is still playing, but I can't seem to get back to drawing on this thing, nor can I select the marquee. So I was disappointed. Maybe I'm sure the Windows version version is much more stable, but yeah, I'm on a Mac. Let me try restarting this again. Ever since we've purchased it, uh, it's just it's just been super buggy like this. Let me try this again because I really want to show you one of my favorite features of Flipbook. Let me turn on the light box. It's got a nice little X sheet. Okay, there's there's a problem there. And this has happened to me a lot. I feel like I've I've double click I've double clicked on other cells and then they haven't initiated a new drawing. So on frame number three, I'm just going to get rid of these pieces. Go to frame four, maybe turn off my light box, go to my pencil. Maybe. There we go. Okay, frame four. Still drawing on frame three. Let me move that up. Replace. Okay. I'm sure this is just my my user error here. Cut. Okay, now I'm back on target. One, two, three, four. And you know, I've seen other professional animators use uh, use Flipbook in their seminars, and have the same problems. You know, they're they're teaching some kind of animation fundamentals. And they're trying to f they're trying to initiate new drawings in in the Flipbook cells, and it just won't go. And then they end up using, you know. Photoshop layers or something like that. So, yeah, a little disappointing in in the sense of, I just it, it has so much going for it, and I wish it had more functionality. Uh, let me see if I can make it work this time. Oh, I'm really disappointed. They have this really nice scrub feature, that maybe I just do I not know how to get to it. I felt like I was getting to it earlier. This happens to me. I'm hitting the turn. Yeah. Now I'm I'm frozen. Okay. I seem to be frozen again. Pausing the recording. Okay, finally got this working. Um, I don't know why it wasn't working before. Maybe it just needs to be updated to a later version of Mavericks or something. Anyway, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six frames here, and if I hit enter it'll play through, but then it'll give me this little scrub arrow, which I really love because I don't have to search for this timeline or, or kind of, you know, hit this tiny mark where I can scrub. I can go on any part of the screen and just drag back and forth and I can flip. And that is the strength of Flipbook to me because I'm drawing, 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 and I can quickly, wherever I'm drawing, hit enter. Uh, and I don't have to go to the timeline. I can right there just go scrub back and forth, do some more drawing, you know, if I need to hit enter and scrub back and forth. So I love it. I just, I wish it would behaved more consistently on the Mac maybe. Maybe it's just my system. I've tried this on three machines already and, and I seem to get the same kind of bugginess. I'm sure it's more stable on Windows. But again, I'm working in a Mac environment. So for me, the flipbook just wasn't doing it. So as an overview, the strengths, it's lightweight. It does have enough features to be considered a program for animators, obviously an X sheet, uh, you know, a timeline, onion skinning, in this case, a light box. Love the scrubbing tool. Great tech support. It's inexpensive. The weaknesses, it's an average drawing experience as modern technologies go. Poor transformation tools, 
and a buggy Mac implementation. So for me, the verdict is it's a great tool for roughing out ideas, but because of its limited transformation tools and brush engine, the drawing experience is frustrating. Next up on the list, Autodesk Sketchbook Pro, really. And since version 7, apparently they're just calling it Autodesk Sketchbook. And, and as an app, it greatly improved. And I mean, it's always been pretty stable, and there's, it's always been a, a good drawing experience, but I think it's, it's really uh, becoming a, an even more powerful tool for collaboration between Photoshop and Sketchbook. Even the Android and uh, Mac OS apps got some nice upgrades this year. But even more exciting for a lot of people was the new Flipbook feature that they implemented in the desktop version. So let's take a look at that. And that is right here. So uh, you enable it by saying, uh, go, going up to the menu and saying new flipbook, which is which sets up, sets up a different file than just a regular drawing file. I think of all the animation programs, this one seems to be uh, the best in some ways so far. Why? Because it is a great brush engine. I mean, who can doubt that sketching in sketchbook is, is a great experience. So, you know, they're basic pencil works as you expect it to work and whatever else you want to animate in but most of all it's it's a very simple timeline here at the bottom um, I can click on any part of the timeline start drawing and it'll in initiate a new frame and as it should um, the drawings that I've done previously hold so I find it to be fairly stable I mean I've, I've drawn something on frame one I'll go to frame five now on frame ten kind of just tap to to start a new drawing there and I can easily just continue on, you know, down the down the line. These drag, and I wish this is what I wish most for Photoshop is that uh, you just have simple frames that you can drag along the timeline, and the default functionality be, you know, this hold functionality, which is is how you rough out timing, you know, when you're starting out an animation. I can undo this key, and when auto keyframe is not on, I'll come up here, and it'll just continue to draw. Uh, on that frame. So I can continue to draw on this frame, on this one. So when key is off, it'll just draw, it'll apply the drawings to the last set uh, frame that had a drawing previously, which I really like. Again, I can set a key, then easily start coming in here, turn on my onion skins, and, uh, and do some in-betweens. So, you know, now there's an in-between right here. Nice, simple, clean functionality. I can come in here in the center, hit plus, plus, plus. That'll scoot everything down. Uh, hit X. This will scoot it back. Of course, that duplicates. This makes a new drawing. If uh, it basically has the same functionality as as using the auto keyframe on. This is a simple loop. What I don't like about it is two big things. I feel like the onion skinning options are cumbersome to set, so I can turn them on and off easily here, which I like. But, you know, changing how many I want before and after to have it be some kind of a list like that, I feel like is, is uh, yeah, it just interrupts my flow. Again, that may be because I, I often change the amount of onion skin settings often, and maybe other man animators don't. So that may not be a, a deal, be deal breaker for others. Uh, the biggest one for me is that it only has one animation layer. So... What I mean by that is, yes, of course, we have a background, a mid-ground, and a foreground. But these three drawing layers apply on a per-frame basis. So I can use the mid-ground here and, uh, I don't know, put a hat here. Put a hat here. And put a hat here, right? And those are all on the mid-ground. So if I come here, the mid-ground, I can turn on and off. And they, and they do behave independently. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Um, but what I can't do is I can't add another animation layer and say, you know, I want uh, I want a, just a simple ground to persist. You know, draw, draw one ground and some grass. That ground, I, there's no way for it to persist across all the layers because there's only one animation layer, even though there's two drawing layers. And that makes Autodesk, uh, the, the sketchbook flipbook feature, really limiting for me because... You know, I can only rough out basic animation. I have to go to another package if, if I'm going to have any kind of dual animation layers where one has a hold frame and, and you know, maybe one, one frame has his body the whole time and I'm just animating the head and another one has his arm. 
I have to animate every piece of every frame uh, just to simulate some kind of hold frame. So yeah, good and bad. I, I feel like if Win Sketchbook implements further animation layers, this is really going to be a powerful tool for animators. This is why I, I wish so much that Photoshop can get its act in order and uh, and become that tool for the animation community. Sketchbook is close on its heels. So overall, for Sketchbook Pro strengths, it's a great drawing experience, lightweight app, inexpensive. The timeline works as you'd expect it to work. Weaknesses, limited hotkey functionality, only one animation layer really makes Sketchbook Pro a hobbyist's animation tool and not a professional one yet. Okay, last but not least is Pencil 2D open source software. And this is an interesting one because I think it speaks to uh, the real need in the independent animators community for something that's not only affordable, but that just works for animation. Uh, apparently this started out as Pencil that has been around for a while and from all the blog posts I've seen has a real following, a lot of appreciators back in the day. But it got dropped because the developer just had a change in circumstances apparently and couldn't continue to support it. So another community started developing Pencil 2D and this gentleman has really done a lot of work just rebuilding the animation and brush uh, excuse me the animation engine from the ground up to make it a real open source project where other developers can add to it unfortunately it looks like you know he has another day job and he just has not been able to get to it i'm sure in the way that he'd like to but i would love to see this piece of software grow and a lot of people are excited about it but we're not programmers so um it just kind of seems like it's dead in the water the biggest problem with it is the brush engine S and, and the the developer admits it he just hasn't had a chance to get to that point yet so pencil looks like this again a nice simple interface a lot of things behave as you want it as, as you'd expect a piece of animation software to behave so um, again I'll just do my little circle here so he's even implemented bitmap layers vector layers there's a camera layer that's super interesting which I'll show in a second uh, I'll just keep things simple and, and get rid of this vector layer. So bitmap la bit layer, if I s uh, scrub forward and draw, it draws on the same layer, which I, I expect unless I add a new key. I'll hit plus, new key, plus, new key, new key, new key. So yeah, real quick, um, some good onion skin options. I mean, just, you know, before and after, basically. You can turn it on and off here. Very simple functionality right now. Obviously, he, he's really just creating a blank canvas for, for people to build on. So I would expect that at some point you could control how many, how many drawings before and after you'd see. But it's very, you know, it seems to be very stable. You can grab these and they're very easy to move around. And yeah, it's super easy to use. I think the biggest problem here is it's a horrible drawing experience and I don't think the developer says that it is. <laughs> it's just he hasn't gotten to it yet. So if you draw quickly, then it seems to, well, I guess it's, yeah, it's not even that, that straight of a curve either. But especially when you're trying to really get in there and uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember how to zoom in here. Yeah, I can't, oh, there it is, with the right click. And here's the hand. So yeah, I think you'd agree that, let me put this side down. So it does have, it does have kind of like a soft brush mode. Um, but again, it's, it just, it just needs a decent brush engine. I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. This is the pencil mode, which seems to, be the only one with some kind of opacity, I think. Yeah, I think that the brush mode just basically feathers it and kind of simulate. You can see it kind of redraw a little bit after I do a curve. It'll kind of jiggle and try to straighten itself out. So not super controllable. I just, I wish more for this. And 
I'm sure there will be more at a, at a certain stage. At the same time, I'm surprised at some of the really advanced things that has like a camera. So you basically draw in the canvas layer, and then you can see that there's no there's no canvas markings, which is really disconcerting at the beginning. You know, have no idea where you're drawing. But then as soon as you go to the camera, you can set the you can set the placement of the camera to frame exactly what you want, and even animate it. So you can see that the camera already has a couple keyframes here that I've moved around. I'll come this way and zoom in. So yeah, uh, somewhat of a, a 2D camera within the Pencil app, which is amazing for this little free open source app. So is it good for any real solid work yet? No. Does it have layers? Yes. The bottom line, uh, the strengths, simple interface, nice roadmap, it's free. Weaknesses, no, no dev support to speak of right now, and just lack of key features. But I guess we should keep an eye on it because uh, it's a great project and a labor of love for sure. So next, uh, moving on to Photoshop CC. And my biggest fear is that this is a missed opportunity uh, to create a, a tool that is powerful, that is familiar, and really needed in the animation community today. So let me pop over. And let's see the current functionality of, of Photoshop animation. And if you're completely unfamiliar with it, uh, you should definitely check out kind of the de facto tutorial on Photoshop animation techniques with, with Alex Craig. It's an hour, and he does a great job just going through uh, all the functionality of the video layer and, and how to use um, layer animation. There's a couple different ways to animate. So highly recommend it. And it's what I'm using now to animate. Um, yeah, it's my principal animation tool after all this, even after owning uh, software like Animate Pro, just because I can draw in it. And uh, yeah, so despite some of its limited functionality, that's where I'm at. But let me just explain very briefly why I feel it's limited right now. So there's one super interesting piece of Photoshop which really baffles my mind is the timeline. Uh, it's a full-featured, well, I shouldn't say a full-featured, it's a decently featured video editor and it's it's one of the oddest pieces of photoshop functionality that i've seen so i can create a video timeline i can actually bring in a couple pieces of video and i have things like fade and crossfade and fade with black and fade with white odd i i wonder who is using photoshop as a video editor i don't know and what i feel bad for is i'm sure there's a dedicated team of programmers who are completely invested in the timeline and uh, I'd love for this to become uh, the spot for animators to live in so let's just do a, a kind of a brief overview uh, essentially when you create a layer in the timeline it creates this giant giant layer so I'm just gonna drop this way down or I could come here and just cut it in, into two frames and as soon as you drop one frame behind another it creates what's called the video group again definitely go see that uh, tutorial by alex craig to understand the ins and outs of these methods um but what ends up happening here is is it, it creates frame frame based or layer frame based layer animation i'm just going to delete this one because excuse me i'm just going to delete this one because this is just a solid white layer and i want to create another layer on top that is my video group, but that has, is transparent as you see here. So again, one of the irritations is that as soon as you create a layer, it, it creates this giant, you know, 62, 84, uh, 130 frame layer. <laughs> it's not helpful. So I end up having to come in here, chop it, and I have a, a one frame layer. I'll add a new one here, join it. It creates a video group. I'll chop that one. Now I have a two-frame layer. Again, you can immediately see how cumbersome this can be. Uh, the other way to do it is to just take your last one and duplicate it. Of course, it'll duplicate just the one frame. But again, not super intuitive. I understand this is not meant to be an animator's tool. And yet, apparently, it was programmed in to behave this way so that you could string multiple static drawings together and flip through them. That's why I'm a little confused. Either way, it works. So I'm gonna grab my brush tool, and uh, again, we'll just stick with our little 
spheres here. So move move along, and you know it has uh, onion skinning. I've assigned it a few uh, hotkeys, so I'm just gonna hit F3. I'm gonna do this. Next one, this. Next one, this. Immediately, you can see how the the way that you select layers to me becomes very cumbersome because I'm moving the timeline. If I'm on frame one and I want to draw here, it tells me, nope, can't do it. Oh, I got to select that layer. Okay, now I can draw on it. Okay, I'm flipping. Okay, I want to be on this one. Uh, I have to select it. Come back. Nope, got to select it. So, yes, I do start to develop a muscle memory where I move and select, move and select. But that's not how you want a piece of animation software to behave. Um, the good thing is I can come here and create a hold frame, you know, for as long as I need. It's a little cumbersome to grab. I can come in here and move this to another spot. Uh, the bad thing is if I create another, if I take this one and duplicate it, and I try to even just add a new one here, for example. Of course, it does that giant new one. Yeah, so just you wish it had some 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 better functionality to to navigate the timeline and to and to throw drawings on the on your timeline there. The alternate way is to use the video layer functionality. I'll say new blank video layer. And instead of using layers as frames, as many of you probably already know, uh, it actually seems to render a little or generate a little film clip within Photoshop. So I'll draw a circle there. I'll go to the next frame. I don't have to select anything. It's awesome. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. And if I flip this open, I can see how much of this little film clip I've used. Unfortunately, um, the film clip doesn't have any dividers, so that's confusing right away. And if I go up to frame seven and I do something there and I kind of move this, it, it is a little latent, but it adds a frame there. The problem is it doesn't hold. So it has recorded all of these frames here. Let me turn off my onion skin. It's recorded all these frames here, but where there is no drawing, uh, there's no drawing. And I, and I really wish this one held until the next one. So I'm kind of forced to grab this one, say, um, duplicate frame, which I've set to option command F, right? Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. But now I'm, I'm running this one down and I can't grab this and move it backwards, which I wish I could. So instead of duplicating it, I have to select all, copy, paste, paste, paste. And now I have just a simple hold frame, which obviously is can become very confusing and really prohibitive, especially if I just want to adjust that one hold frame that's been holding for three frames. So I'll adjust that one, but now the rest of them need adjustment. So now I have to copy, paste. Yeah, anyway, you get the idea. Very cumbersome. But the guts are there and it's a very stable timeline. I understand this is mainly used, I, I imagine the intention would be for rotoscoping, which this is, you know, yeah, be a great rotoscoping tool. But anyone who's doing any serious rotoscoping is likely using a piece of software dedicated to that. So again, I'm, I'm just wondering who is using the timeline? And I would really like to know who you are because that's amazing. Why can't this turn into an animation tool? So to that end, I put together uh, a brief little mock-up of what I would love to see inside this proposed animation tool. So I've mocked up uh, what I would love to see as the basic functionality of a new animation layer in Photoshop. Again, I just did all of this in After Effects and I'm proposing a new animation palette as you can see here. So the first thing to note is that there's a new layer with a little animation disk. So in addition to the video layer that al already exists would be a modified version of that, which would be the animation layer. So I'll just play this through and, and then talk through it. So we immediately see uh, a first drawing, and the first thing that we see is that it holds. So no matter where I am, it references the last one. I've just added a new one, and of course it holds. So drawing one is holding for the first two frames, and drawing two is holding for the rest. But I can grab that, select it, and move it, just as I can in, just as you'd expect in a piece of animation software. So here I'm using the keyboard, simulating that to uh, change frames. And now adding, deleting frames. And of course, when you're on a frame, 
uh, it, it actually deletes it, just like S Sketchbook Pro, basically. Now I'm pointing to the auto key feature. It's off, and if I draw when it's off, then it just draws on the last drawing. But as soon as I turn it on, it actually creates a new drawing, just like other animation softwares. So there you go, pretty straightforward. And and again, uh, the video layer the video layer already has an auto key auto draw feature, so it would just be the ability to to toggle it off. The next uh, thing would be this this concept called navigation mode, and when it's on frame, so I'm just kind of demonstrating the different drawings that exist there. When it's on frame and I'm going left and right with my keyboard shortcuts, uh, it just moves forward and backward one frame at a time. But when you're on drawing mode, it skips only to where there's a drawing. And then when you're on key mode, there would be an ability to select one or multiple frames and then tag them as something. In this case, it would be keyframes. It could be just a, a keyboard shortcut. And then, of course, the navigation would navigate between keyframes. Good, so that's that. The next one is uh, onion skin functionality. We'll play this one. So here's a timeline with a drawing on every frame. Three of them have been, mar been marked as keys. And just real basic onion skin setting tools. So it's on, and if something is set as key, then just the keyed drawings are onion skinned, or just the drawing drawings are onion skin skinned, which I've, I've not shown here. So I've gone back to frame, and a real simple way to turn on one None to five, which I think is mostly what, what I would use. This is showing the scrub tool, uh, which would kind of behave like the hotkey of the rotate tool. It just enables and scrubs back and forth. So to review uh, problems I see with animating in Photoshop, number one, the video layer animation lacks functionality. Number two, the layer animation method interrupts the creative animation process. And number three, helpful features are hidden or inaccessible to shortcuts like, well, onion skinning can have a shortcut added to it, but things like onion skin settings are really cumbersome to get to uh, in its current implementation. So solutions would be five things. Create a new animation layer type. Essentially, it's a layer animation functionality plus video layer method. And that would equal this new layer and this uh, new animation layer type, which simulates Sketchbook Pro's flipbook timeline functionality. Second, add more frame navigation modes, and that implies being able to tag certain frames as predefined entities like keys or breakdown frames. Number three, uh, expose existing functionality in a palette and make them accessible to keyboard shortcuts like onion skin toggle and settings, timeline navigation, as shown in the demo. Four, add the scrub timeline functionality. Super helpful, speaks for itself. And five, uh, implement some After Effects timeline shortcuts, which I didn't show in the demo, but simple things like start and end range in After Effects are B and N. Timeline zoom is, is minus and plus. And that will really help um, users kind of just cross over super easily into this, uh, into this other tool. So, it leverages Photoshop's incredible strengths. It's a known software experience. It brings illustrators and animators together into a common workspace. It uses the power of existing and known workflows like smart objects and linked objects and adjustment layers. Uh, and number three, it, it's a, it, it leverages a strong ecosystem with the After Effects compositing pipeline, which many are using anyway. Even uh, even if they're using TV Paint or, or Pencil or, or Flipbook or Sketchbook Pro, yeah, the end result are, are a string of JPEGs or PNGs that, that they're compositing in, in something else, likely After Effects. So why not use a tool that already has a strong relationship with it? In fact, you can uh, import these animation layers into After Effects. It automatically creates compositions for you with all the layers strung together. Wow, that would be such a powerful tool not only for the uh, illustrators working on a, on a project, but for the animators. Another thing I found is that I have a, a group of, of artists who are not animators, but who can draw. They can immediately hop into Photoshop and help me ink uh, rough animation or clean up animation, rough animation for that matter. And uh, they don't have to learn a whole new software package. So the power 
that Photoshop can bring to a young, uh, independent or you know small studio who already owns the software and knows the software is inc has has incredible value. So there's my open letter. I hope it can happen, and I hope that this these kind of developments in Photoshop can receive a lot of community support. Thanks for listening. <laughs>